Favor determines the limits of everyone's destiny. Favor is like faith. It demands that God be your source and your only source. You can wear favor. People can see it on you. One encounter with favor was worth a lifetime of labor. With favor, you're going to get confidence. With favor, all you got to do is know God. Now, I want you to get that, saints, because that is one of the biggest differences between the world and the church. I said, God will open up your door. That door can be locked and sealed for years, but when you stand in front of it, it will open up. The favor of God is so powerful. And till no harassment, no weapon, no nothing, because God has endorsed you. You're going into a place now where God's about to raise you up. But I don't want you to compromise going up the mountain. Come on, I don't want you to bow to Baal. I want you to maintain your stand. And the way you're going to do that is through favor. I'm giving you favor because favor is going to lift you up. And it doesn't lift you up through you complaining. You start complaining and that's an indication you're not in faith because faith is always positive. Got it? So God, there are seven mountains. I'm going to name the mountains. One, the religious mountain. I don't care what religion you have. It's religion. Whether it's Islam, Christian, it's a mountain. The next mountain is family. And the family is saying, here's a family. A family considers in terms of marriage, a husband and a wife, not other. This is a family. Now I'm just giving you the Bible now. I'm not trying to be, you know, next educational mountain. This is a mountain that is something that gives people understanding of the times or, or history and, and gives an interpretation of reality to a degree. Education, government mountain. This government mountain is a mountain that it, it gives you legislation and laws and so forth and so on like that. What's happening in Washington now, this financial cliff because of the things that are happening in terms of the strife in terms of this, this mountain. Also, the media. The media is very key because you've got not only television, but you've got screenwriters. You've got people who are in that particular mountain. Another mountain is, of course, the arts and entertainment mountain. That's including your sports figures and so forth and so on. And then the last is business. Now, in that, these mountains are there in society, and the enemy's job is to control those mountains because he's controlling those mountains because he wants to keep his culture in those mountains. Say amen to that. In it, there is something that these mountains cooperate together we call sphere overlap. And the enemy has very cleverly tried to get the church to stay behind four walls and not realize that the church is people and that you can take the church to business because you are the church. And what he's done is trying to separate to do. For example, religion. I call it religion because you, you everybody know what that word is. And business, okay? And some people say they don't mix. Well, just think about it. Think about Islam, for example, and how in their religion, the business people know that part of their responsibility in terms of doing business and getting profit is to help to build Islamic training centers or mosques for their religion. That's a natural, automatic thinking. 
Got it? Okay. They even may go to some political whatever and they wear their religious outfit because they haven't separated that from this. Come on, help me now. They haven't separated. Lord have mercy. In their schools, they teach some on the Quran because they're not separating their education from their religion. All of a sudden, the politics told you separate church and state. But the truth is, if there were no church, there would be no state. Watch this. Let's keep going. And in the schools, if you dare open a Bible and read from it, you will be arrested. That's where the church has come. Why? Because somebody preached religion and not the kingdom. That's got to change. When our forefathers made these writings, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, they prayed. Now these mountains, can I keep going? On the way up that mountain, whatever you bow to will own you at the top. And that's why some of these politicians can't say nothing. Cause somebody is in their pocket. So now the kingdoms, he said all these kingdoms, see, it's an S on that. If you know anything about Revelation, Revelation chapter 11, he said in verse 15, the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the what? Kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign, come on, forever and ever. The devil had some kingdoms, but we coming in. And the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our God and of his anointed ones. This is good preaching folks. Over in 1 John, 5 and 19, he says, we know that we are of God and that the whole world, what? Lieth in wickedness. Let me give you a translation. You might want to jot it in your Bible. The whole world is under the control of the wicked one. Say amen. Amen. Now, we are here to change that, folks. Say amen to this. And you just wonder... Why people who are in debt will go and borrow more money. Now they're they're trillions of dollars in debt, but about to go either borrow some or print some more. You know, when you're in a hole, stop digging. Or how about a storm? Comes a storm. Let's say it's Sandy. Boy, this storm is coming. Oh, it's coming. Boy, they tell me this is going to be a, oh, this is going to be the storm of all storms. I tell you, this is so forth and so on. Now, I understand. That's what people are saying. Got it? Now, the media, because it doesn't know any better. Now, I understand people are not doing it maliciously. But the enemy, the Bible said in Revelation 12, 9, has deceived the whole world. So what are they doing? Here, here's what it says. He said, Satan, the devil, the serpent, which has deceived how much of the world? The whole world. So people who don't know God are walking in darkness and been deceived. So they say, oh, it's coming. It's going to be the greatest storm. This storm is going to so forth and so forth. Now, what are they doing? They are licensing the spirits that are behind it. And what does it do? Wipe them out. What did Job say? He said, look at Job chapter 6 and verse 24. Look at at that. 
teach me, keep going, and I will do what to my tongue? Hold my tongue and cause me to understand why I've erred. Look at Proverbs chapter, come on, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Look at it. I'm talking about folks calling storms. Death and life are where? Not in the power of the devil. He can't move unless you allow it. The, the, the demons need authority. And they get it from people's speech. So when the storm starts to come, the church got to rise up. Folks, we can control the economy. Watch this. And we can control the weather. I better go to the other side. (laughs) So if you don't want it, don't say it. We can cut it off. We are here to lift the curse, not cause the curse. All right, let me just finish this. So here's Daniel. Now I'm just, for the sake of things, let's go to Daniel chapter six first. Oh, wait, wait, I took you to Ephesians, didn't I? Okay, okay, Ephesians chapter six and look at verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. This is talking to you. Yes, sir. That you may be able to, withstand, to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because yes, you can stand. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. Where? In high places. All right, let's watch Daniel. Daniel chapter 6, please. Over in Daniel chapter 6. Daniel was doing real good. But what happened is the rulers or the people who were in position of authority talked the king into making a law. And the law that they talked him into making, yeah, here, verse 7, and all the princes and presidents and king of the kingdoms and governors and the princes and counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save thee, O king, he shall be cast where? In the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign in writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed in writing the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open and his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and what? Underline pray and gave thanks to his God as he did aforetime. I'm saying that the devil was trying to stop Daniel from praying. Because what you will discover is that Darius wasn't running the kingdom. Say amen to that. Let's go over to Daniel chapter 10, please. Daniel now is praying before God, asking for a petition. And he did it, went on a Daniel fast for three full weeks. Now the angel shows up. Verse 10, and behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, Understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken his word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. 
and I am come for your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia which stood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief priests came and helped to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. So what am I saying? Prayer was what they're trying to stop. Because Daniel was the one that was running this thing. Not them. At Lord, see, God is the king. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, you don't have to sit down and take just anything. Glory to God. So what am I saying to you now? The wicked spirits in heavenly places are assigned by Satan to run governments. I'll say it again. The wicked spirits that are in heavenly places are signed by Satan to run government. Nebuchadnezzar wasn't running it. What the enemy does is people in positions who don't know Jehovah God are subject to glory to God I want you to see this. Lord, have mercy. Come to another verse. Same chapter, verse 20. Then said he, Knowest thou therefore, wherefore, I come unto thee. And now will I return to fight with the prince of what? Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of who? Grecia shall come. What I'm trying to get to you is that Nebuchadnezzar, Darius, Prince of Persia, Prince of Greece, were only secular representations of the demons that were running it. The demons were running Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was a figurehead. He was being controlled, Lord have mercy, by demon spirits to take the country whichever way the demons wanted them to take it. It's the demons that's trying to run America, and we are not going to let it happen. a strong man's house unless you first bind the strong man. See, we're going into every mountain. Now, what am I saying? The enemy is assigning people to run governments. And you and I are the only hope for the world. Because we can bind the strong man. But I want you to see this. First, after Persia, was going to come Greece. Well, that's what Daniel talked about in Daniel chapter 2. He said there are going to be some kingdoms. First, Babylonian. Next, Medo-Persian. Next, Grecian kingdom. Uh, uh, or, yeah, Grecian kingdom. Then, Roman kingdom. So forth. He told them whatever kingdom is coming. And, and in each one of those kingdoms, the devil raises up a strong man. He raises up somebody to be over, a principality to be over the leadership in that country. We are going to break that up. Amen. And what am I saying to you and I? We have favor on our lives. And I want to close that favor piece out with this. Now, don't think prayer won't work. Because the devil is trying to do everything to keep you from praying. Because when you pray, something happens. He's trying to keep you so busy, fussing with your wife or your husband. Come on, come on, trying to deal with rebellious kids, whatever have you, pray for them. 
Pray the power of God down on them. I don't care where they're at. Pray their britches back up. And pray that they want to go to school. Pray a desire for good things. I'm talking about we can pray everything. He said, my house shall be called what? A house of prayer. For all nations. Folks, we're going to find out how powerful prayer really is. Satan made one law to keep a man from praying. Now you think about this. If he can take over governments by putting people in there, he can take over companies. Come on. He can take over, you, you name it. So I'm here to tell you, his days of taking over are over. Say amen to that. All right, let me just finish this and just give you this because I'm wrapping up favor. The favor of God is on your life. Genesis 39 and 21, the favor of God produces supernatural increase. Exodus 3 and 21, the favor of God produces restoration. Exodus 11 and 3, the favor of God produces honor among your enemies. Deuteronomy 33 and 23, the favor of God produces increased assets, real estate. Joshua 11 and 20, the favor of God produces victories. 1 Samuel 16 and 22, the favor of God will produce recognition. They'll recognize you out of a group of people. Over in Esther chapter 2 and 17, the favor of God produces preferential treatment. Over in Esther chapter 5 and verse 8, the favor of God produces petitions granted. The favor of uh, uh, Esther chapter 8 and verse 5, the favor of God produced laws changed. And, Proverbs, and Psalm chapter 44 and verse 3, the favor of God produces battles won, which you don't have to fight. I'm saying to you right now that you are like Daniel. You are like Joseph. You have been put in this world, but you are not of this world. And I don't care what Babylonian system is trying to do. You have dominion over that system. And you are the one that is going to bring the blessing of Abraham into a place and cause all kinds of people to avoid the curse. Your day of, of favor has come and your time to manifest his favor is now. Well, I trust that you were blessed by this powerful message. Now, today is offering day on the broadcast. This is a time we give you, the listening audience, or those that are being blessed by this broadcast, an opportunity to sow seed into this ministry. We are doing a worldwide work. Praise God. And it takes money to do it. As you sow your seed, you're making an investment, not only in this ministry and in the kingdom, but you're making an investment in people's lives. People are able to actually be a benefit off of the teachings that we're doing because we're able to go there. Praise God. Well, as I was sowing into the kingdom and learned the process of sowing and reaping, I learned that I cannot take my confession and go against what I believe is being done. In other words, if I sow a seed, I can't say, you know, I can't ever get these bills paid. Or, you know, none of this ever works for me or you know, I bet you as soon as I sow this seed, I'll get laid off. <laughs> you know, you can't say things like that. You got to say, hey, I've given and now it is given unto me. Good measure, pressed out, shake it together, running over. Men are giving into my bosom. I remember the confession was really taught to me when I spoke to my bills. I took my bills and I put them on the table. You know, I taught, heard this man's teaching about how he did that. And then I remember going out one winter day when my car wouldn't start and spoke to it and it started. And then I said, if you'll start, my car will start with words then my bills can get paid off with words. And so I spoke to those bills. I said, bills, I'm talking to you in the name of Jesus, be paid off. Now, God then led me to sow some seed. And as I did that supernaturally and within one year, every debt I had was gone. I'm telling you folks, I was supernaturally in debt. 
people were calling the house and we didn't have call ID like you have today, but they were calling the house and I'm telling you, I, uh, I got those debts paid off. That was the biggest burden off of my shoulder and I owe no man anything even today. That's been 30 years. No house, no, no car, no nothing. Everything is paid cash. Why? Because I give and it shall be given unto me. Well, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to know that as you do sow this seed into this, this ministry, that my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. As you prepare your seed, I'd like to pray over it right now. So just in mind or keep it in the envelope or hold it in your hand, whatever you do, just as a point of contact. Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the seed that are being sown into this ministry. Every person, Lord, that is sowing this seed, I pray that you measure it back to them a thousand times more. Father, or whatever need they would have, I pray that that need is met. Lord, we thank you for it. We believe it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is Bill Winston saying thank you very much. Thank you for helping us to get the gospel to the nations of the earth. We love you and keep walking by faith. Favor determines the limits of everyone's destiny. Favor is like faith. It demands that God be your source and your only source. You can wear favor. People can see it on you. One encounter with favor was worth a lifetime of labor. With favor, you're going to get confidence. With favor, all you got to do is know God. Now, I want you to get that, saints, because that is one of the biggest differences between the world and the church. I said, God will open up your door. That door can be locked and sealed for years, but when you stand in front of it, it will open up. The favor of God is so powerful. And till no harassment, no weapon, no nothing, because God has endorsed you. You're going into a place now where God's about to raise you up. But I don't want you to compromise going up the mountain. Come on, I don't want you to bow to Baal. I want you to maintain your stand. And the way you're going to do that is through favor.
head I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space, no privacy And silently it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer no exposure, I just wanna be a loner uh, Some can't stay sober, looking over all their shoulders Like moving boulders just to get out of the home It sucks, I've had enough, I don't wanna feel the stuck Under the rug, all my problems that I shove I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But let's be really real, anxiety can foggy all this stuff I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But let's be really real, anxiety can foggy yeah. all this stuff it sucks when you finally feel like giving up Oh God, no luck Everything feels like you're sticky stuck I'm lost, handcuffed To the bed where I sleep, don't give a fuck Can't stop, unplug Feeling overwhelmed, I think I've had enough uh, Gotta find a way to get some energy Gotta find someone who's a good friend of me I need purpose to make it all worth it I'm still searching and I'm still learning I want a life that's filled with memories Not a life with a grand in front of me I need focus to keep me from hopeless Psychosis if I keep moping I got nightmares in my head, I feel